<laughs> wow. um, all right, uh, I'm IDK. I'm here to talk about uh, I2P. I work with the I2P project and also for uh, our trade technologies. They've got all kinds of swag here, but I'm pretty sure I'm the only one. Um, the, uh, and uh, well, I'm just gonna dive right in. I'm gonna give you a, a 10 minute version of my 80 minute DEF CON talk, so <laughs> we'll, we'll do our best. So what is I2P? Uh, I2P is a free network. It's built on free software and it is as egalitarian as we can. Um, it's an anonymizing network, so we have to take things into consideration that, uh, that prevent us from reaching that goal 100%, but unless there is a safety-related reason that we, uh, the, that we can clearly discern, everyone in the network is, an, uh, is a first-class participant. We actually even ship a, uh, a, a default hidden service for you to start your blog with and everything else, too. Uh, it's a means of establishing pseudonymous connections. We have, uh, everybody is identified by a key and the, uh, and the key is shared in a specialized DHT that we use to do blinding and mixing and things like that. Um, and uh, because of that, you have the ability to create a pseudonym and insert it into the network and then discard that pseudonym whenever you feel like it. Uh, it also provides an unspoofable means of ad addressing, but the most important thing that it does is acts as a substrate for anonymous applications. And that's what we've always uh, kind of done. We've been, we've been an application first network for a very long time and that's one of the things that makes us a little different from Tor. Tor can do these kinds of things, uh, certainly, but uh, it's a little bit more complicated for them still. Um, <coughs> we, uh, uh, what I mean by that is um, Tor has done a, an excellent job building things like Tor Browser, um, but we, but uh, that's not really where our strength is. Our strength is adapting existing applications like IPFS or DAT um, or BitTorrent is probably the biggest source of our traffic at this point uh, to an anonymous framework. Um, we are also not like Tor in some other ways too. We're primarily an in-network uh, darknet. We don't I oh, hate that word. <laughs> we're primarily, I'm gonna use it again, we're primarily an in-network darknet. We uh, focus on hidden services and less so on providing out proxy access, although that is changing over the course of the next few months. We're going to, uh, we're gonna formalize some recommendations there. Um, so how are we built for apps? Uh, what we do is we present, uh, we present APIs that are designed to work in fairly familiar ways to the people who uh, to the people who develop applications so they don't really need to know too much about us except that what they get back from our APIs is an identifier and a socket. Um, so you do a little handshake and you set some options and at the end and the at the end of all of this what you get is just a thing that you write some bytes to and then i2p does the rest um, there's no well obviously we're not magic we we do the nat hole punching for you <laughs> we do all those kinds of things we we uh, we get around the firewall and all you have to do is implement the network connection. Um, unfortunately for us, that put a little technical barrier to entry uh, for, for us for a few years, and I'm really trying to, uh, to address that. Uh, we really wanna talk to you. We really want to speak to people who are working in these distributed distributed addressing spaces, um, or di distributed uh, content spaces and uh, distributed technologies. Um, we really want to hear from you and how we can help you uh, add anonymity as a feature to your application. Um, we 
aren't generally in favor of monocultures. There are some counter arguments there that I probably don't have time for. Um, <laughs> we believe in cooperation. Uh, we can help you and you can help us. Um, and, well, I think I maybe went a little bit too fast. Uh, <laughs> but I have a few examples of applications that we that are uh, very successful as uh, I2P applications. For one, Bigly BT. I don't know if any anybody here use Bigly BT. Am I the only one? Oh, oh, you're missing out. <laughs> it's an excellent BitTorrent client with lots of very cool features. Um, it, it's the successor to Views and Azorius, and hopefully shedding some of the <laughs> some of the things that required it to be a successor. Uh, it has an I2P plugin that ships the whole I2P router. It'll configure a browser for you. It does all kinds of cool stuff. Um, and the best thing about it is that it can bridge. Uh, it can bridge ClearNet. There's another one of those words I hate. Uh, to content to the uh, to the I2P BitTorrent network. Um, IPFS is another one. I am actually working on this one personally. Um, we uh, what we're doing here is trying to create a CDN inside of I2P for serving content that people have already inserted into IPFS so that we don't have to out proxy as much or rely on out proxies as much because crossing into the clear net provides opportunities for bad actors to do bad things. Um, and lastly, a few cryptocurrencies are very into us. A uh, couple of false starts with Monero, uh, but we're getting there. Um, <laughs> Kavri kind of turned into a disaster, but we're getting there. They've started this I2P0 project, which is more or less an enhanced uh, desktop interface for I2P when embedded into an application. Um, and they're doing a great job. We're working very fast on it. Um, and and uh, yeah, we, we, we're here. We, we're free. The network belongs to you already. You just have to use it. And we want to hear from you. And that's really all that I, all that I have. We have time for a couple questions, if folks have any. I see one here at the back. I wanted to get started running an I2P relay. Is there an easy like one-liner I can put on a server to help the network? Uh, maybe maybe a three-liner. Oh yeah, that's that's cool. <laughs> uh, it's it's uh, what get whatever our key is sudo apt get uh, update sudo apt get install I2P. Um, also, we're we're in a few other uh, distributions uh, as well. I think there's a. Fedora package in their third-party repository now, um, and Alpine has I2BD, which is our uh, C++ implement implementation. Besides that, uh, I don't recall the headless router install command off the top of my head, but um, I, I, I will have to look that up and get back to you. Uh, quick follow-up, just like Tor, is there is there like the concept of an exit node, and can you decide whether you want to just be a relay or an exit or a client or a server? Uh, by default, nobody is an exit node. Um, there is only one exit node. We actually call them out proxies uh, at this time that is available to the public. It's called false.i2p, and it's run by one of our developers, uh, Mikal. And uh, we, but. Uh, it, and it will never be a thing that we opt people into by default. Um, our opinion, at least with open out proxies, is that you should be at least as careful as Tor exit nodes oper uh, node operators are. Um, and so we'll never, ever opt anyone into being an out proxy without, uh, without their knowledge or consent. Thank you for the great intro. Thank you. Let's give all of our Lightning Talk speakers a round of applause.